Sold Said Nafi there because of political reasons <laughs> within the Indian Express and around me not one. So I said, listen, do you mind that this place is absolutely short of uh, Muslims? So I'm going to hire some. They said, yes, some if we get good ones. So we sat and everyone knew that Said Nafi is the editor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the difficulty is that if your band is, say, 10, and below 10, you will tend to reject. And if a Muslim comes with 9 or 8 or 7, one can somehow squeeze these two characters. But if the fellow is 2 and 3, then there's nothing that you can do about it. So believe it or not, out of these 600 people, not to one, carry one very miskeens up. Fellow came, he wasn't very good. Suddenly, a very handsome young chap walked in. And I am very, I have my own prejudices and I like good names. And his name was Gul Faraz. Gul Faraz means flower and a, and, and a, and a beautiful flower. I said, Gul Faraz, he looked good, he spoke very well, he had, he had lots of promise in him. I had to say nothing, both these people said, hire him. So Gul Faraz was hired. Within months, Gul Faraz crossed over to the Hindu as something, some editor, this, that and the other. And then he ended up as the sports editor in Delhi for NDT. I came to Delhi and I was at the Israeli ambassador's house for an evening and I see Gullu there and he said, Sir, you must meet the ambassador. I said, and then he took me by the hand and he took me to the Israeli ambassador. I said, Gul Faraz, tell me something, what on earth are you doing here? He said, Sir, you didn't know, I'm a Jew. <laughs> The fellow was Gul Faraz Ezekiel. He had deleted Ezekiel, come to me as Gul Faraz, and all these people they thought they're doing Said Nafi a great favor. We all clapped. <laughs> Until I saw Gullu, you know, you still see his name. Gullu, uh, Gul uh, Ezekiel. Gul Faraz. So that's that's the community. So what on earth can you do? How do you include them? The other thing is, and this is a serious matter, <coughs> recently there was a question of Rajya Sabha seats. All sorts of people for reasons unknown got in. Now there are no MPs from Madhya Pradesh, there are no Muslim MP from Madhya Pradesh, none from Rajasthan, I don't think there's any from here. Uh, and there are four or five or six or seven states where there is no Muslim MP. Why? If you project a Muslim, he may be in sizable numbers, but then he tends to consolidate the Hindu vote on the other side and that fellow wins. So therefore don't field any Muslim because it's dangerous. So you are not going to field any Muslim in any one of these states because though sizable, the manner, the result and the consequence of his candidacy is that the other side which amazes me that it is the other side. <laughs> the other side consolidates itself and the party who floats this Muslim loses. Therefore, what is the trick? The trick is not to touch a Muslim candidate. Now, if this is the state of affairs, how on earth are you going to talk of inclusive development? The problem is far too, the cancer runs very deep. Part of it is prejudice, part of it is self-defeatism of the Muslim. A great deal of it, these 10 years of Bush years created another kind of mentality. I'm glad to report that my own sense is that that, that kind of anger is exhausting itself. But the situation in the neighborhood in Pakistan, in AFPAC, 
in Afghanistan is not very congenial and not very conducive to the health of all of us as a people and you simply cannot, you can't wish away 150 million people at all. You will have to include them. What do you do? Proportional representation? In the, in the first parliament, if you remember that uh, Frank Anthony used to be the one for, one for the Anglo-Indians, one for so-and-so. Maybe you have to change the whole system. Otherwise, representative government in this country is going to be skewed because of this factors. Then you will bring in through the Rajya Sabha. Then uh, there will be another backlash. Now, and I'll finish on this one, but this problem. There is constantly a quest, Sayyid Nafi. Liberal Muslim koi leader aap kya nahi hai? Do shize. Ek sorry. All this happens and you people don't say anything. I say, I say everything. I do this at home. Have you got a TV camera on me? Have you given me the media? Is there any media? I mean, how, how do you get the Muslim reaction? By you, Muslim reaction is if he has access to the media, he'll say it. If he doesn't, he sits at home and says exactly what you want to say, but you haven't heard him. So this media, <coughs> media as a culprit, you have to have another. There's one suggestion that you, that we may have a discussion, A, on the whole issue of that media. That's very important here. Yeah. And the second is on the media. I, 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 will, I have some ideas on that. I didn't hear what you said. Sorry? What are the two subjects? Kashmir and, uh, and the media. These are two separate things. I think we should, we should consider them. They are, they are live, live issues and people don't understand. We are the only country, in, free country in the world who does not have a regular column anymore, regular columnists anymore. Five newspapers have Tom Friedman, Maureen Dowd, David Cohen, uh, Farid Zakaria, all American newspapers there. Those spaces have been given to them. You don't have a regular Indian columnist. In the olden days, Giri Lal Jain, you may disagree with him, but he intervened. Nanpuria, you may, Nanpuria was very erudite. When he intervened, people heard. Shamlal. That intervention is gone. There is nobody now. So, the, the point I was making that to, to have inclusive development, there is constantly this question, A, they don't talk. Secondly, where is that liberal leader, liberal Muslim leader? And I have maintained from day one that this quest is a false quest. Because a liberal Muslim leader is a contradiction in terms. It's like a liberal Brahman leader, a liberal Chamar leader, a liberal Dalit leader, a liberal Christian leader. It's a contradiction in terms. And according to me, until 1964, the undisputed leader of Indian Muslims was a man called Jawaharlal Nehru. I shall be the leader and you will stand behind me or you will be the leader and I will stand behind you until we do this cross knitting and do not understand this quest for a Muslim liberal Muslim leader is nonsense we need a good liberated liberal person enlightened in the community who will lead us we will all join them but if you make it sectarian a Muslim leader then you will create problems a Christian leader, or a Brahman leader, or a, or a Maratha leader. I'm afraid we, are, we have to live through some of this. But let some of us, as, as Wilde said, we are all in the gutters. Only some of us are looking at the stars. Thank you very much. <laughs>so some time ago, Ashish Nandi, in an interview to Tehelka, had talked about Arabization of Indian Muslims as an emerging phenomenon. Please, can please comment on this? It needs to be understood. It's not a negligible phenomenon. 
when the Soviets, I'll give you a, a slightly, I'll give you the backdrop so you understand why the phenomena is there. When the Soviets occupied Afghanistan, a project was undertaken by three people. United States of America to expel the Russian Soviets. Saudi Arabia financed it so that it could, by which time the Iranian Islamic re revolution had taken place, so that Wahhabi Islam in that belt would be a bulwark against Shia Islam. You follow? So there were three projects. One was the American project to expel the Soviets. Second was the Saudi project to have a Wahhabi belt in Afghanistan as a bulwark against Shia Iran. And third was Ziaul Haq. He said, my God, this is the time. Exactly all that nonsense that I've been speaking about our composite culture, about our, my God, I mean, in my village, there is a, you know, there's a thing called Sohar. Sohar is a song sung during, um, when a woman is in confinement. The song is, Allah Mia, Hamre Bhaiya Ka Dio Nand Lal. Oh my Allah, give my brother a son like Lord Krishna. Now, Ziaul Haq said all this Ganga Jamni Tamasha, it dilutes our Islam. It will always keep us in the cultural thrall of Hindustan. So how to disengage ourselves from this, this the, the, uh, the, the magnetic pull of this composite culture in India. Those therefore who destroy this composite culture are actually fulfilling Ziaul Haq's agenda. You get my point? Ziaul Haq thought that by creating this Wahhabi Islam in, uh, in uh, Afghanistan and bringing it into Pakistan, Pakistan will become a West Asian country and not a South Asian country. The idea was to culturally tear us apart, from disengage us from uh, the Pakistan from us. Yeah, that is the project which has certainly uh, gained in Pakistan. I mean the. The attack on the shrine, the Datar shrine in Lahore, a thousand year old shrine. First, the Ahmadiyas were killed, Shias were killed, then the shrine has been killed. So, what is being attacked there is this um, the, uh, the diversity within Islam is being attacked. And naturally, some of it, they all, they, the conflict there is between Deoband and Bareli, Deobandis <coughs> and Barelis. This is what they, this is what they tell you. Abai Deoband happens to be near Muzaffarnagar in UP. It is a seminary there. So, it was never. This was never the project of Deoband, but this was certainly the project of Ziaul Haq. And it has been the project of Jamaat Islami in Pakistan. So therefore, that that uh, uh, by a process of osmosis, if it gets through, it we we have to be, uh, shall we say, on alert.